Hi fellow artists, my name is Lauren, I'm the artist behind Potato Art Studios, and this video is the second part of my watermark tutorial, so if you haven't seen part one yet, I'll link it up in the cards right here and also down below in the description box. So I recommend you watch part one first so that you'll know how to basically save a proper watermark file. And this video will be covering how to insert that watermark file you just created into your photo. So if that sounds interesting to you, just keep on watching. So part one of the watermark tutorial covered how to convert your JPEG into a PNG file with a transparent background. So we will be covering how to insert that file onto your photo. So I am using Affinity Photo. Um, Affinity Photo is similar to Photoshop in many ways, but many of the instructions that I will be going over are compatible with most file or photo editing programs. So the next step will be to apply your watermark to your drawing or your photo. So I'll open up my picture that I drew of my lovebird Craig. I'm going to open it with Affinity Photo. And you'll see that this is not a square format. Um, if you have a artwork that's not, you know, a one-to-one -one square ratio, you can do two different things. Um, so you can crop it. So I have the crop selected and I had the parameter set to one-to-one -one, so it locks the dimensions to be a square and I can crop it like this or if you'd like to include the whole drawing and just have a border you can adjust it and make the picture a little bit larger and do that. So typically I like to have the drawing fill the entire square frame so I will go back to crop lock it as one-to-one -one, and just make sure that Craig is centered. So press enter to apply the crop and we're going to see that if you take a look at the navigator this file size is actually pretty large. I'm zoomed in only 40 percent and it's actually taking up my entire screen. So I will resize this picture. So I'm going to go 800, resize, and so now at 100%, the full size, we have our drawing of Craig. So I'm going to re save this as a new file because I don't want to s override the larger files that I had originally. So I'm going to save as, title it as maybe Instagram Craig. So now he's ready to have his watermark. So remember we exported our watermark as a PNG file and I named it something that would make sense to me. So it's watermark 800 by 800. So I'm going to just simply drag the file over my photo. So you could do this and just import your watermark onto your picture and just leave it like this. If you'd like to do something a little bit different, you can, of course, have the move tool selected and move it around to any corner. I would advise that if you are dealing with a drawing similar to this where your subject is usually in the center of the paper and the rest of the space is blank. If you were to put the watermark in this location in a corner where it doesn't overlap your subject, it's very easy to edit this out. It is extremely easy. So to demonstrate how easy it is to remove a watermark that's left in a area that doesn't overlap your subject, I'm going to just copy an area adjacent to it. Duplicate that. 
and I'm just going to overlap it. And look, it's like you never had a watermark. So if you place a watermark, try to overlap it with something that has some information. Um, if you don't, it is extremely easy to remove it. And you saw how quickly that took. That was basically 30 seconds of effort. So don't just have a watermark on the side. You do want it to overlap slightly. So I'm going to undo that. So instead of having your watermark on the edges, like here or here, I would recommend having it either centered on the body, not, not necessarily on the face because that would be distracting, but you want to make sure your watermark actually overlaps something that you drew. Because if I have the watermark actually block parts of the drawing, it's very hard to edit that out because you're making it more difficult for that person who is intending on stealing your work. So now there are a couple different things you can do to make your watermark a little bit more seamless. And I'm going to show you a couple of the options that I do most often and you can pick the ones that appeal to you the most. So the easiest thing to do is to basically just lower the opacity a little bit. So right now the watermark is at full opacity, so it's 100% opacity. If I slide the bar to the left, you'll see that it'll slowly fade. So if you fade your watermark too much, it's actually not very helpful. So I would make it probably less than 80%, but more than 25%. So somewhere around 30 is where I typically have it. And that looks a little bit more seamless. So it's not very distracting, but if someone were to repost your picture that you worked so hard to create, it would be very difficult for them to physically alter your file to remove your watermark. Another option is to change the layer parameters so right now it's on normal. Let's actually increase the opacity a little bit so you'll be able to see the effects. So I'm going to change the layer properties of the watermark layer. And you'll be able to see with this watermark now zoomed in how it affects the layer below it. So this is just at 57% opacity and normal layer settings. As I slowly scroll down, you'll see how the watermark changes as it interacts with the layer below it. So this is darken, darker color, multiply, color burn, lighten, and so on. Overlay is one that I commonly use besides normal. Soft light is also a good one. So subtract can be a great one for other scenarios. Hue would not be a good one. You can see that the watermark basically disappears and it leaves a, looks like a blue artifact on your drawing. And erase obviously doesn't quite make sense because it actually erases the layer below it. So for this example, I think I'm going to go with the option that I typically do, and that's overlay. And let's zoom back out. And I'll adjust the opacity a little bit, make it about 30%. And so this is the image that I would share on Instagram. So the watermark is there, you can definitely read it, but it is going to be hard for someone who doesn't have the best intentions to remove it. So if someone really wanted to take my photo and use it for you know, their own purposes, they would either have to crop my photo so they would remove the watermark by just giving a shot of the head of the lovebird if 
they had a lot of resources to expend, they could probably pay someone to remove the watermark, but that would take maybe 20, 30 minutes of effort and it and you would be able to slightly tell that they made that adjustment. So when people are looking for things to steal, they're usually thinking about what's the most I can get for the least amount of effort. So once they see your watermark, it automatically deters most people from trying to steal it because it's not worth their time. They're planning on stealing dozens or hundreds of images from the internet. So if you have a watermark and they can see your watermark, that's usually a pretty good deterrent. And it won't deter everyone, but it will deter most people. So another way that you can protect yourself from art theft is to export your file at a lower resolution. And I know that a lot of platforms say that you should upload a really high resolution picture, but if you do that, you are also giving a very good quality picture free. So what I do is that I only export as 800 by 800. And when we get to this export settings, I export as a JPEG. And this quality bar here, I will actually lower this. So you can see the file size at 100% quality is almost 500 kilobytes and I will reduce the quality to about 75%. And you'll see that the size of the file has been dramatically reduced by a factor of six to seven. So that's six to seven times less information that someone will have. So when I export this, let's export it as Instagram Craig. So I'm going to export the file. Let's just open the file so you can see how small the exported file is to the original file is working with. It's almost 10 times less information. But if you were to look at it, if you were to look at this photo, it looks good. It doesn't look bad. It's not like it's a pixelated photo. So if you were to zoom in, you can see now that the picture is blurry. But for someone who's looking at this on their phone, your picture looks pretty good, but for someone who's trying to reprint this on a large format poster or reprint it on a shirt or a coffee mug, this is not enough information. The quality of that product that they're trying to create from your content would be very poor. So that is all I have for you today. So if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to check out my other affinity tutorials, I do have a playlist that I'll link in the cards and down below. If you have any other questions for me, feel free to comment down in the comment section and I will get back to you. Subscribe and turn on your notifications if you'd like to see more videos from me. I do try to post a new art related video every Tuesday. And thank you very much for watching. I will see you in my next video.